Hello, I am Chaplain Anthony Kelly. And today I want to talk to you, not only just as an army chaplain, for I am, but I represent the Christian churches and churches of Christ, the Restoration Movement. That is my faith background. I'm an ordained minister within that faith group. And I want to talk to you about the importance of water baptism as an essential element of the salvation process, meaning that it is an essential element to be saved. In Acts 2.38, as Peter was preaching to the crowd, they were cut to the heart, and each and every one of them said, what shall we do to be saved? And Peter declared, repent and be baptized, each and every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission or forgiveness of sins, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, this act of water baptism, as it states in Romans chapter 6, identifies us and the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Meaning, you are identified in the nature of Jesus' death. That is, I who no longer lives, but Jesus Christ lives inside of me. It's not the removal of dirt, but a pledge of a good conscience. This means that you, in order to be saved, need to be baptized in like manner. Now, I am a Christian. I follow the New Testament in all things for faith and for practice. The New Testament says that for every case of conversion in the New Testament it is found in the book of Acts. And in each and every case of conversion, there is water baptism. You may have some that repent and then are baptized. Some who believe and are baptized. Some who confess and are baptized. But in each and every case, there is water baptism by immersion. Not by sprinkling, not by pouring, but by total water immersion into the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. This act identifies us in Jesus. Now, the Bible tells us we need to be saved by doing certain things. It's a formula. The first element is to believe in who Jesus is, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the God, that you believe Jesus is who he says he is. Then you need to acknowledge that you're a sinner in need of salvation, that Jesus is the only one that's going to save you. The White House can't save you. Congress or Senate can't save you. Insecurity paycheck cannot save you. A stimulus check will not save you. Nothing will save you except Jesus. And that you acknowledge that you're a sinner. And you repent of your sins. And then you confess him before all. That Jesus the Christ, the Son of the Most High Living God. That good confession that Peter declared before all at Caesar Philippi. And then, lastly, you need to be water baptized. It identifies us in his death. So when we're raised from the water anew, we are a new creation, brand new, with Jesus living inside of us. Now there's nothing magical in the water. It could be average pool water or lake water. But it's what happens spiritually when we are buried in that waters, we meet the blood of Jesus Christ. So therefore, I arise a brand new person, creation in Jesus Christ. It's I who no longer lives, but Jesus lives inside of me. And it's not by any work that I do that I cannot boast, but it's Jesus' work by what's done in the act of baptism. Now, some people in some denominations will relegate it to, oh, the first century, it was a practice for them, but it's not a practice for us. Or they may say, it's not needed today. Or all I have to do is say a sinner's prayer, sign on the dotted line, and some pamphlet I find in the toilet in the john somewhere. And that's all I have to do. No. The Bible does not state that there's a sinner's prayer for salvation. But it does state those elements I mentioned earlier. To believe. To repent. To confess. And to be water baptized. And the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of me. Before salvation, the Holy Spirit is my parakletos. He's alongside of me. But now, thanks be to God, He dwells inside of me. And it's all done through those elements. That the Holy Spirit now lives inside of me. 
and able, enables me to live out this life in, the, in this sinful world for Jesus. I'm a disciple for Jesus. Now I can start studying the Word of God and it becomes real to me and impacts me in a powerful way. Therefore, I can live my life for Him and not for myself. Yes, Christians will and do sin. We're, we have that fleshly propensity to sin. We're like a fly drawn to the bug zapper. We will always be struggling with that temptation to sin. But we have the power. Jesus has set me free from my sins. By his blood, he has set me free because I met that blood in the waters of baptism. I am free in the Son, and I'm free indeed in Jesus' name. So therefore, I encourage each and every one of you to follow the Bible in all things. The New Testament for your faith and practice. Yes, we need to learn a lot of stuff in the Old Testament. A lot of examples of faith. And it points, all of the Old Testament points to the New. The New points back to the cross. And it's a cross is a perfect meeting ground for them both. That bridge the gap between God and mankind. So I encourage you, if you've accepted Jesus, you believe in who Jesus is, you've repented of your sins, maybe even confess, you, I, I'm a Christian, but you've never been water baptized, I encourage you to find a good Bible-believing New Testament church and get water baptized into the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Not for the removal of dirt, for the, but for the pledge of a good conscience. Just as Noah was saved by the flood, so too the flood of Jesus' love will pour right all over you and that water of baptism so that you can declare, I indeed am saved. In Jesus' name, Amen. May God's grace and mercy be upon each and every one of you today. Amen.